Anamorphs, the Invasion, Chapter 25. I sailed through the air and struck the closet hork, the closest horkbajur in the chest. Down he went with me on top of him. He rolled over and tried to get up. He was fast. I was faster. He struck at me with his razored arm. I ducked under the blow. My left paw swung so fast even I couldn't see it. It left four oozing tracks across the horkbajur's shoulder. Another horkbajur. Wrist blades, elbow blades, and talons whizzed. They were like a pair of lawn mowers on full throttle. And still, I was faster. I can't even remember what happened next. All I have is this image of the tiger, of me, with claws slashing and jaws snatch snapping. I was a whirlwind of orange fur and black stripes. The horkbajur fell back. I roared. They turned and ran. On one side, I saw Rachel. She lifted a horkbajur up on her tusks and tossed him back over her shoulder like he was a doll. And then I saw Marco. Big Jim's massive body was ripping its way out of Marco's light, slight frame. Just call me King, Marco said. King Kong. The truth is, like Cassie said, gorilla, gorillas are very gentle, peaceful, quiet creatures. The truth also is that they are strong, real strong. Basically, compared to a gorilla, a man is something made out of toothpicks. Now Horkbajur are pretty now Horkbajur are pretty large creatures. They stand about seven feet high and are built for trouble. But Marco swung one big gorilla fist and hit the nearest Horkbajur in the stomach. The Horkbajur went down hard. I roared. Rachel trumpeted. Marco lifted the Horkbajur up and tossed him aside like a rag doll. The rest of the Horkbajur turned and ran. Now, I shouted, before they get organized again. We charged. Rachel just plowed, plowed right through some of the small sheds and buildings like Godzilla heading for Tokyo. Marco came loping along, swinging his massive forearms, punching anything that got in his way. Whatever, whatever he, pun he punched stayed down. Whenever he punched, I stayed down, and I ran through right down the middle, looking for any controller dumb enough to mess with me. We reached the cages. The people and hork inside shrank back from us. They were almost as afraid of us as they were of the controllers. Let's face it, a rescue party made up of an elephant, a gorilla, and a tiger is not what they'd been hoping for. Marco be began ripping at a lock on one of the cages. The lock gave way. The door flew open. Marco did something very human to reassure them. He made a little bow, then crooked his finger at them to, as if to say, come out, come on out. Tom was the first out. He looked scared and mad and determined. I was going to send him through, I was going to send him a thought message telling him who I was. But suddenly there was Rachel screaming in my head. Jake, Rachel said. Look, Cassie. Cassie was nearly at the end of the, infest, of the infestation pier. The hork and taxon guards were still sticking to their duties. As I watched, another human was shoved headfirst into the yurk pool. Cassie is next, I cried. Don't worry, Margot said. We'll take care of Tom. Go, go, before they do it to her. I hesitated for only a second, as a thousand thoughts went through my head. Later, I would think about that moment think maybe, maybe, if only. I broke into a run. I had to get her. As I watched, the hork on the pier grab Cassie by the arms. No, she cried. I tore a full speed. I leaped over the taxons, dodged hork I practically, I practically flew. But I couldn't really fly, not the way Tobias could. I saw him high, high up in the cavern. 
Down he came, like a bullet. The taxons came forward. Tobias hit the first horkbidger at about 50 miles an hour. He swooped away, leaving the alien clutching at the slimy mess where his eyes used to be. That was all Cassie needed. She broke away and ran back down the pier. I finally got there and went after the remaining horkbidger controller. Morph, I yelled to Cassie. Morph and head back for the stairs. She looked at the other humans and Horkbidger behind her in the line. Run, all of you run. They did. Cass Cassie plowed into the panicky crowd. Moments later, a black maned head appeared above the shoulders of the crowd. Cassie had become a horse and was racing for the stairs. I started after her, racing back around the pool toward Marco. Rachel, Tom, and the crowd of hosts they'd freed from the cages. The controllers were starting to get organized. A group of taxons were slithering out to stop Cassie and me. Both the Horkbidger and the taxons were carrying weapons now. Up and over, I said to Cassie as we neared the line of taxons. Up and over, up and over, she yelled back. I leaped. Cassie jumped. Side by side, we sailed over the startled taxons. They fired their handheld draken beams, but it was too late. The beams sizzled the air behind us as, and we blew past. I could see Rachel's towering gray bulk just ahead. The stairs were near. I saw Marco with Tom. We were going to make it, out, make it. And then he stepped out daintily from a group of Horkbidger. And then he stepped out daintily from a group of Horkbidger. He seemed almost harmless in his andalite body, a gentle half-deer, half-human, looking creature with bluish fur and an extra set of eyes on comical stalks. Visser Three didn't look all that scary, not compared to the Horkbidger, the Taxons, or even our own Earth animals. But Visser Three had an andalite body. He had an andalite power an Andalite's power to morph, and he had been all over the universe acquiring the genetic patterns of monsters like nothing ever seen on Earth. A taxon slithered up beside Visser Three and spoke. It was a weird, half-whistling sound. Visser Three said nothing. He just looked at me with the horizontal slits that were his eyes. This taxon fool says you are wild animals, Visser Three said. He wants to know if he and his he wants to know if he and his brothers can eat you, he laughed silently. But I know you are not animals. I know who and what you are. So not all of you Andalites will So not all of you Andalites died when I burned your ship. It took me a couple of seconds to realize what he meant. Then it hit me. Of course, he thought we were Andalites. He'd guessed that we were mo that we were morphs, not real animals. And he knew that Andalites were the only species with morphing technology. I compliment you on getting this far, but it will accomplish nothing. Because now, my brave Andalite warriors, it is time, time to die. He began to morph. I acquired this body on the fourth moon of the second planet of a dying star. Like it? I realized I'd been wrong to be hopeful. We were not going to make it. So that was chapter five of Animorphs, the invasion. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share to your friends. Please. Bye.